Before I introduce our next speaker, I want to ask you a question. Um, and you don't have to answer out loud, but I, if you don't know, I guess I should ask it this way. Do you know who your congressman is or your representative is? <laughs> Representing Arizona's 7th district is a man named Raul Grajalva. <laughs> Mr. Grajalva called on the entire country to stop doing business with the state of Arizona. <laughs> Now, the unemployment numbers in Arizona have been bad like the rest of the country, but I can think of one person we would like to be looking for work in November, and that's Raul Grajalva. Find out who the people are that are opposing him and give them your time, give them your money, and let's send him a clear message in November that he needs to be looking for work. The reason why I mention that is because in just a moment you're going to meet somebody that is a former member of Congress. I had the privilege of meeting him for the first time at a rally not too long ago, a tea party at Tempe Diablo Stadium, and he blew the lights out of the place. He is a phenomenal speaker, and I, I've never actually said I miss somebody that used to be in Congress, but I'm very close to saying we sure miss you in the United States Congress. Please, a big warm welcome for Mr. Tom Tancredo. Thank you guys. It's a pleasure. It is a pleasure to be here today. You know, in the, in the early 60s, um, there was this city in the world that was called sort of under siege. And it was uh, a scary place to be. And the President of the United States at that time, John Kennedy, went to this city. It's called Berlin. And he said, when he talked to them, he said, you know, Ich bin ein Berliner, saying, I am a Berliner. Well, I will tell you what, my friends, today and every day that it takes until this country is finally, finally meeting the, the, the challenge of immigration, true immigration reform, I am an Arizonan. You can always tell. You can always tell how effective any law is that's designed to deal with illegal immigration. Because as it, the, the value of the law, the value of the law is met by a commensurate amount of, of hysteria by the other side. As, as good as the law is, that's how hysterical the other side gets to try and oppose it. And so judging from that, this bill, 1070, is the best damn bill that's been passed in the United States of America. When I went and ran for the Republican nomination for President of the United States in 2008, and my primary purpose was to advance the idea of immigration reform. It was to get every single person, I used to say all the time, is to get all the, the tall guys with good hair on the stage with me there. Uh, but then Rudy Giuliani got in, I couldn't say that anymore. But, but I'd say get all these guys to actually deal with the idea of border security. And, and you know, I, I probably didn't do as good a job as, as I could have. I mean, I tried my best to get America to focus on it, but it took something else. It took 1070, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting America to pay attention to this issue. You can also... You can also tell how popular some bill is. I mean, you know, there are lots of people in my profession, unfortunately, who's take, who, who decide how they feel about any particular issue by putting their hand in the air, you know, say, which way is the wind blowing? You can tell how popular a bill is by how many politicians try to climb on the bandwagon after it's left the gate. After, yeah, and one of them right here, unfortunately. You know, there's this guy. Uh, there, there's a fellow running around here, he calls himself John McCain. Now, I, I, I don't know who he really is. I'm almost sure. I mean, because I, I know Phoenix is the kidnap capital of America now because of illegal immigration, because of the drug trafficking. I think John McCain has been kidnapped. And, 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 I, and I, think, I, I think they got an imposter running around here pretending to be somebody concerned about borders, making commercials going, where's the doggone fish? You know, and it is incredible, is it not? Incredible how all of a sudden everybody can get behind this issue. Who, even though they spent their entire time in the Congress of the United States trying to keep those borders open, trying to do everything to oppose us. So I am, I am hoping. I'm, I'm going to raise some money.
money. If anybody wants to contribute, I'm thinking, I think I'll contribute to the whoever has kidnapped the real John McCain. Let's send him some money. Tell him keep that guy. He was abducted by aliens. He's been abducted by aliens. <laughs> Great line. Great line. I'll try to remember that one too. And by the way, we're going to do it. Be doing a fundraiser after this for J.D. Hayworth over in the bowl. So join us. Join us when you can. Now. I gotta tell you, the last time I was here, I was speaking at, at I don't know exactly where it is from here, but it was the Embassy Suites, and, and I, that way, I had some time, and I asked the guy at the door, at the desk, I said, hey, where can I get a cigar? And he says, oh, about a mile down, and there's a little place, so I said, okay, and I start walking, and pretty soon I thought, this was not a good idea. It was got pretty hot, and I got to this little place, and it was kind of a, you know, off the, it wasn't a very uh, comfortable looking environment, and there's a guy out in in front, there's a there's a um, a, um, a a taxi out in front, and there's a guy in the front seat and guy in the back seat, but nobody driving. I get into this little tobacco store, and there's these four people standing there, all black fellows, so, and they look at me like, "What are you doing in here?" And I said, "Ah, uh, your guy just came to get a cigar." And this one guy starts looking at me. He says, "I think I think I know you." He says, and I'm thinking, I, "Where's the exit? You know, how do I get out of here?" And, and he says, "No, no, uh, I think uh, didn't I see you on television uh, debating debating?" somebody on, on Lou Dobbs and I said I said yeah you probably did he says well great you're great you're a great guy we really appreciate it well we, we walk out and, and it's his taxi and he wants to bring me back to the hotel I said sure now this guy is a Muslim and the two people in the car are Muslims his name is Sufi Shair I want you to remember that and Sufi I don't know where you are today buddy but I hope I make you famous here Sufi Shair and and he's just happy and he's telling the other two guys in the car he's saying oh this guy ran for, for president and he's a great guy, great guy, and, and on and on. And he says to me, you know what's wrong with you Republicans? He says, you've, you've given up on all the principles. He says, don't you want, now listen, this is a Muslim guy, two other Muslims in the car. And he says to me, don't you people understand it's borders, language, culture. You know, I, I mean, it was, it was wonderful. I mean, it, it, he gets it. He gets it. He's one Muslim that gets that he's here and wants to become part of the American mosaic. He wants to become an American. He understands the problems. There's a guy in the White House who does not understand those problems. And I'll tell you right now, I used to think, I used to believe that the greatest threat we ever had to this country, I mean, when I was a kid, it used to be Russia with the ato uh, uh, atomic bombs. And after that, it was Al-Qaeda. But there is somebody that is a greater threat to American liberty today than anybody else I can think of. His name is Barack Obama. He does not he does not see the America that you and I see. He looks at a different place. He looks at the America that you and I love. He looks at the America that the founders put together and he says, I don't like that. I'm going to create something else. And he says, to, when, it, when his friend, the president of Mexico is here, he says, we are not defined by borders. We are not, well, maybe he isn't defined by borders. He says, nothing met. Citizenship is not, in, citizenship is not important. I can understand why somebody like like Barack Obama would say citizenship is not important since he refuses to even produce his own birth certificate. But, but it is a different world he sees, and it's a world we've got to fight, and we will. It, he cannot be successful. He cannot destroy the America that we love, and he can't do it by opening the borders or attacking the Constitution. Because, honest to God, this group here today, and thousands I have spoken to throughout the country, this group will stop him from doing that to this country. And I want to I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. I want to thank you for doing it. Arizona, I want to thank you for doing what you've done. God bless you. God bless America.